The two dishes there are very classic dishes from Italy. Um, they have their roots in certain uh, regions and started specifically in certain regions, but now they are not only found in regions throughout the uh, throughout Italy, but also uh, throughout the entire country. Uh, the first dish is a, a very classic summer dish, uh, originally from Tuscany. Uh, it is a uh, tomato salad called panzanella. Uh, panzanella is, um, is tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, some onion and bread. The uh, dish has been around since probably the 16 or 1700s, uh, a perfect summer dish. And uh, this is a great time of the year for it because summer's coming to an end and all of the, uh, the tomatoes are in, in their prime of, of the year. And um, again, a very simple recipe. Uh, I guess the only kind of nuance that is going to be a hard challenge for us is in the US and around the world, uh, it's very hard for us to find this very specific bread uh, that they make specifically in Tuscany and it's an unsalted bread. Uh, and it really is very particular and very important ingredient uh, that makes the panzanella eating in Tuscany uh, very unique. Uh, the dish, it's not to say the dish cannot be replicated, but uh, it is one of the nuances again of this dish is found in Tuscany with the specific unsalted bread that they use. So uh, as you can see, we have tomatoes, uh, some onions and some cucumber. We have garlic. We have bread. We have some water. And we have some vinegar. And inside our little paper here is some basil, just keeping it as fresh as possible. Uh, the first step, I guess, would be to turn on your oven to make sure it's at about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you're going to toast the bread lightly until it's just kind of uh, crispy and, and toasted through, but not burnt by any means. Uh, so once you have that out, your oven on, uh, the first step that I take when making panzanella, and again, this is one recipe. There's millions of recipes uh, from people that uh, have their reasons for doing things that they do. Um, and this is just part of the, um, how I was taught. And so it's kind of stuck with me and I like uh, the technique. So the first is you're gonna cut the onion and, and peel it. and just get off the rough out, outer layer. And then what I do is I take the onion and cut it in half. And then once it's in half, you can see it kind of has the uh, uh, half moon shape. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit so it lies flat on your cutting board. So I'm just kind of cutting out the core so it lies flat on your cutting board. And part of the reason why I'm doing this is so when we cook the onions and by cooking them I'm in this, in this uh, sense, I mean, uh, we're gonna be cooking them in vinegar. Um, I want them to cook evenly, and I also want the uniformity of the, of the onion for inside the salad so you don't have these haphazardly cut pieces. So by doing, cutting out the core, you have a nice even platform and a nice uh, edge to start the, the cutting of the onion. And just with your knife, just thinly slice the onion. Um, what we do at the restaurant um, is if we have any remaining pieces like from the inside. We always save that for different items such as braising or making stock. Um, so really nothing goes to waste obviously. But uh, again, if, if it is a matter of, of finding an outlet for, for any sort of pieces that are not to your liking, uh, there are many different uh, outlets again as in, in terms of making stocks or making sauces with pieces that are not uh, uniform into the into the recipe. So I have the um, I have the onions. I'm going to take them and I'm gonna put them in this. You could put them in a bowl or this is a, what we call a six pan in the kitchen. And I just put the uh, onions inside this bowl or six pan for the moment. I'm going to put this ladle or this chinois on top. And then what I'm going to do is I will cut the tomatoes. And I'm cutting the tomatoes in no particular way. Um, I want a variety of shapes um, and, and colors just for some texture and uh, also for a variety of the color just so to make the dish look a little bit uh, more vibrant and lively. So again, I'm not cutting them in any particular way, just however I, I choose. 
Um, so these might be a little big. So again, I can kind of like this. And then I have some just whole cherry tomatoes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to salt this. And what I, the, what's going to happen is these tomatoes are going to start to marinate. And they'll start to release juice and the, the tomato liquid onto, onto the onions. And this will start to give the onions uh, the cooking process and a little bit of the flavor. And it'll ultimately be part of the dressing of the salad. So that is the first step. Let this sit at room temperature. And uh, again, occasionally just mix it every once in a while. And you can uh, just leave it and uh, let, it, let, it be, uh, let it be its own thing. Um, at this point, clean up your station a little bit. And I have a very classic uh, bread here by the name of ciabatta. It is a very rustic, easily sourced bread. Uh, if you can't find this, really any sort of uh, rustic or country bread that you may find will be just fine. So I'm gonna cut it and then we're just gonna make some croutons. We're gonna toast them in the oven with a little bit of garlic for about 15 minutes or so. Uh, but again, it's, it's really dependent on the size that you cut the bread, how high your oven cooks, um, and uh, you know, all of these kind of outlining factors that may be particular to your kitchen. It is not extraordinarily important that they are uniform, but you do want them to be somewhat uniform. So when they cook, you know, you don't end up with some burnt pieces and some pieces that end up being raw because they're too big or again, burnt pieces because they're too small. So somewhat uniform. And they're gonna be, ultimately they're gonna either be broken apart or they're gonna be soaked in vinegar and water. So they're gonna lose their shape at, any, at some point anyways. So you can see I have the bread. I'm lie it out here so it's flat. I'm gonna take a little bit of garlic, say here about three coats, and I'm just gonna smash it with my knife. And then once it's smashed, I'll just kind of do a couple rough chops and put it in through, uh, sporadically throughout the, the bread. Season it with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and a touch of olive oil. At this point, we could put them in the oven. I recommend, uh, again, 350 degrees for about 15 minutes, uh, but it's something that you're gonna have to keep an eye on the entire time. So I'll put these in the oven now. And while the, the bread is toasting, we still have our tomatoes. You can see that they're releasing a little bit more liquid. I will take a cucumber um, and my vinegar and my water. So the vinegar and the water could go just into a mixing bowl. This is a half a cup of vinegar and a half a cup of water. You could set that aside. This is what the breadcrumbs are gonna go into a little bit further down the road. And then this is a Persian cucumber. You could use really any cucumber that you like. I, um, I prefer these because they have a little bit less seeds in them. And they, um, they, uh, they're just typically a nice smaller cucumber and they're more uniform in shape. So again, it does not matter how you cut the cucumber for the dish. You can cut it in a half moon shape which is fine. You could cut it into quarters. So they're a little bit more triangular. Uh, you could leave it whole and cut it into rounds. Um, or even further, you could take out some more of the seed. And cut it into nice diced pieces. 
For me, my preference is actually the first cut of the half moon because it gives a little bit more, it gives a little bit more body and has a little bit more texture to the salad. And you can taste and physically feel the cucumber when you're eating it um, within the salad. So the cucumbers here, I'm gonna salt it just a little bit so it starts to break down and uh, it'll take on, uh, it'll start to release some of its liquid, liquid as well. So at this point, I don't know if there are any thoughts or questions, um, please feel free to ask. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now is in lieu of time and not just waiting for the, um, the bread to toast, I have some pre-cooked toasted breadcrumbs here. I'm gonna take them, you can see, they're pretty hard. Uh, so they've been cooked through and I'm gonna take some of them, I'm just gonna soak them in the vinegar. So the vinegar will rehydrate the, the breadcrumbs or the croutons and make them like a sponge for the salad. So they'll give them a nice acidic flavor because of the, of the vinegar. And then this will help to uh, be the robust kind of hearty, nutritious, um, very filling part of the salad uh, that the bread brings to, to this particular dish. So give it, let it soak for about three minutes. You could still, you could, I could still tell that they need a little bit more time because they're just not soaked up enough. And then you could start to combine everything while that's happening. I have the onions. As you can see, they have a lot of liquid left just from these little tomatoes. Onions are actually a little bit, you can see they've broken down. They're becoming a little bit more translucent. You have some cute, the cucumbers can all be combined. Season again with some salt and pepper or pepper and salt, I guess. A little bit of more olive oil. And at this point, if you're having guests for dinner and you um, wanna have some things semi-prepared. This is a perfect time to just let this salad do what it wants to do and just hang out here. Um, it actually was gonna take on a lot more flavor uh, by sitting in the marinade. Uh, and then at this, uh, you could let the, let the salad come together. And then at a little bit later down the line, you could add the, the croutons and finish the salad. So I have the croutons here. I'm gonna squeeze the juice out of it. and then incorporate it into the, into the salad. So we'll have the croutons that are textured or not textured because they've been sitting in the vinegar. And then we also have some croutons that I've reserved and broken into little pieces. Um, so that'll be the garnish for the dish. And uh, it also add a little bit of texture from the crunchiness of the crouton. So with this salad, I'm gonna add a little bit of basil. Um, you can use just the inner leaves, which are very nice. You could reserve some of them because you wanna have some uh, fresh basil for garnish. And then again, if you don't have, if you have larger basil, you could just tear the leaves, just it's important to tear them so you kind of release some of the natural oils that are inside the basil themselves. Okay. Mix it together. Always taste it. Maybe a little bit more salt. And for me, maybe just a little bit more vinegar. Uh, the vinegar that the that the um, the uh, 
bread was soaking and it was diluted with a you know pretty considerable amount of uh, water, so it's not quite as, as, as acidic. The acid is at this point good. So just into a bowl. Kind of make sure everything's distributed evenly. Have some variety of tomatoes. There's obviously green tomatoes that are available. There's different color red tomatoes and orange tomatoes and you know different shaped tomatoes and um, heirloom tomatoes at this time of year are readily available. So relatively easy to find. Garnish with a little bit of ba more basil. So you kind of have the cooked coated basil and then a little bit of fresh basil on top. Some fresh black pepper. The additional crunchy croutons. And then last, some more olive oil. And be generous with the olive oil. It really is a key component. So a classic panzanella salad in less than 10 minutes, I guess.